Welcome to Modern Farm Business Podcast. This podcast is designed to help the farm leader bring their business to the next level. We'll cover everything from leadership and finance to strategy and planning. I'm your host, Dean Hefta. As leaders, we face challenges and we face problems. And part of our role is helping our team to learn how to creatively solve those challenges. Today, we're exploring creative thinking and its role in helping us with our problem solving. Let's get started with a story of creative problem solving getting put to work. A Russian businessman walks into a Swiss bank in Geneva and asks for a $100 loan. He offers his luxury Mercedes car as collateral. The collateral is just too good, and the bank manager approves the loan. A year later, the Russian comes back, he repays the loan and the 10% interest, and is ready to collect his car. Finally, the puzzled bank manager asks, Excuse me, sir, could you tell me, did you really need that $100 so badly? In order to get the money, you left your luxury car with us for a whole year. The Russian replied, That's simple. Just think outside the box. Where else in Geneva can I find such a great parking place for just $10 a year? It's a nice illustration of thinking creatively on how to solve a problem. Here's another one. Nearly every government around the world encourages their citizens to sign up as organ donors. So let's take a look at two countries that are very similar in many aspects, but have radically different donor sign-up rates. Denmark runs, depending on the estimate, 4 to 10 percent uh, donation rate. Pretty low sign-up compared to most countries. The U.S. runs around 45 percent. However, in Sweden, the donation rate is over 85 percent. That's an exceptional level. So what's different between Denmark and Sweden? They have very similar cultures, uh, economic levels, religion, and and so on and so forth. A lot of similarities. What I believe this highlights is the results of creative problem solving. It's looking at the outcome that you want and thinking creatively about how you can affect, in this case, the environment to get better results. What Sweden did was to say, if we want more people to be donors... Instead of asking everyone if they want to be a donor or spending millions with marketing campaigns trying to encourage them to be a donor, they said, let's just make the default setting that they're donors and then ask them if they don't want to be. It's called opt out. We're still giving them the choice, but changing the result when they don't make a change to the default. I think this is a great example of creative problem solving at work. And for us as leaders, there are some hurdles that we may have to face in our world to become more creative in how we go about problem solving and using creativity. Some of those hurdles I'm going to highlight here, and you may relate to them, you may not, but be thinking about what you face when you're looking for creative solutions. And then after that, we're going to talk about some of the roles and the characters that can help us with becoming more creative in how we approach leadership and problem solving. So the first hurdle is called being too familiar. There's a thing that occurs when you have lived in the same place for several years. It's called becoming house blind. Because when you see something every day, you no longer see that chipped corner off the counter, the crack in the driveway, or the squeak in the garage door. To counter this, we need to intentionally take on a beginner's mind, saying to ourselves, if I were dealing with this issue for the first time, what would I look at? I heard a story about a, um, a great cleaner at a hotel. She was always the highest rated on feedback from guests on how tidy the rooms were and, and just her approach to the whole experience. And management asked her what she did differently and her explanation was not unique. And so they decided to watch her. What is it that made her different? And what they found when they were watching her is one of the key steps that she had was before leaving the room, she would lay on the bed to experience the room for the first time as if she was a guest. That gave her a different perspective of the environment. 
So it forced her to be able to see things that maybe she wouldn't see as she was going about her duties doing the cleaning. That perspective can allow us to avoid being house blind to the problems that maybe we've faced for years or decades in our life or in our business. It can lead us to asking ourselves different questions about how we can tackle those things that have maybe become so familiar. Here's another hurdle called having the right answer. When we're working to solve a problem, it's so easy to get focused on finding one right answer or the one right answer. There's a couple of risks that we might encounter when we're in this mode, this right answer mode. The first is that as soon as we find an answer that looks right, we stop looking. We get so convinced that we've found our keys that we don't continue to find other solutions. Our creativity stops. This could stop us from potentially finding a better answer because we're so locked in on finding the right answer. As soon as we find one we think works, we stop looking. If we have this tendency, then just asking questions like, what are two other ways that we might be able to solve this? Or if I had a magic wand, how would I fix this issue? Either by forcing us to look for more answers or removing unconscious obstacles, we help ourselves to find solutions that we hadn't thought of or seen before. A big part of this is rejecting the belief that there is only one right answer. In reality, a lot of times there are multiple answers that may solve the problem in different ways. Now, in this same space, there's a second risk that can happen that's on the other end of the spectrum. Because we believe we must find the right answer, we can get locked into this perpetual seeking mode. We keep looking for a solution that's just a little bit better. We keep looking for something that is 99% perfect. We end up spending so much time and money that we've wasted time and money that could have been invested in other ways in other parts of our business. Reality is perfection isn't the goal. We need to understand the concept of being a satisficer. Yeah, that, that is a word. And what it means is being able to make the decision once our criteria has been met. So as soon as I've found a solution that meets the criteria, which I can have very high standards, very high criteria to meet, but I need to have them clear. When I meet those criteria, then I can be comfortable going ahead with the solution or picking among the two or three that all meet that criteria. So we can't fall in trap of one right answer. We need to understand our criteria and balance not falling in love with our first answer nor pursuing perfection. Here's another hurdle, being practical. You've built a business through being responsible and making good decisions. Uh, that involves a lot of clear thinking and logical thinking. But when we're, we're in the mode of creative problem solving, that logical thinking can keep us from finding some really innovative solutions. We can get so focused on what we know, what we've seen, what is, that we miss sight of what might be or what could be. Too much logical thinking can lock us into the same solutions that we're all already too familiar with. If we give ourselves permission that, let's say for the next 10 minutes, I'm just gonna come up with crazy ideas that have no practicality, or maybe we force ourselves to list 20 possible solutions, and we have to get to 20, and to get to 20, that means we're gonna start having to come up with some crazy ideas. We get to levels of thinking that are really pushing our boundaries of what we're used to. The key isn't that the impractical possibility is going to be the solution itself, but it may be the path that gets us to that solution that does work. If it wasn't for that crazy idea, then we say, well, what could make that work? And using this powerful question of what if helps us to open up the possibilities of thinking differently about problems and solutions. What if I only could work here one day a week? What if I had $100 million to solve the problem? What if I had only $100 to solve the problem? 
What if we didn't have electricity? These are questions that trigger different kinds of thinking. And you know, our brains are funny. When our brain hears a question, it is compelled to try to answer it. That's why unexpected questions are so important in our creative thinking process. And we can ask those of ourselves. Here's the last hurdle that I'll touch on. There's many more. It's called, I'm not creative. This is a biggie. But you know, you go into a kindergarten room and ask the kids to raise their hands if they think they're creative. You're going to see just about every hand go up. As kids, we are creative. We love coming up with different ideas and stories and pictures. But somewhere along the way, we get uncomfortable. Or maybe we start seeing others with better solutions than us and we lose our confidence in being creative. Sure, some people are very creative. Picasso, Van Gogh, Da Vinci, and so on are all just off the charts on how exceptionally creative they were. But you know what they all have in common was the volume of work they produced. And because of the volume of work they produced, they all also had a lot of terrible work. I mean, Da Vinci came up with a flying machine that looks like a screw. It would never work. He came up with it, though, as a part of his many ideas that he had. But the more they produced, the more good stuff they came up with, too. A few years ago, there was a photography teacher who took two different classes. One of them, the instruction was that they're going to be entering a photography contest. And they were instructed to go and only take a handful of really high-quality photos because they were going to enter them into a competition. The other class was told to go and take as many pictures as they possibly could. You're talking hundreds and thousands of photos. And from those, they would select a handful to enter in the competition. Here's the result. Consistently, the winners of the competition, the highest rated photography came from not those that were focused on a handful of high quality photos. It came from the ones that produced quantity. Because eventually through that quantity, you find quality. And so that's a challenge to us as we think about what it means to be creative, that a big part of it involves failure and coming up with lots of different ideas. Some of them are really bad and that's okay. That's a part of the process. So when we approach the process of creativity, I like a, a concept from uh, Roger Van Ock where he looks at using four different roles, four different characters or personas that we can bring in and take on to help us to give focus to the creativity and to the creative problem solving process. His first character is called the explorer. Think about famous explorers. Columbus, Cortez, Amundsen, and what they were doing. On their journey, they were collecting new ideas and experiences. They're observing and seeing things for the first time. They're asking lots of questions. And when we're exploring, we're reading new books, listening to different speakers, touring different countries, and seeing businesses. We're looking for ideas that might give us a different perspective, either now or at some time in the future when we need it. The next role we shift to is the artist. What do artists do? They combine new things in interesting ways. They play around with limitation and constraints. They push boundaries and try to apply things in ways that haven't been done before. As we're the artist, we're using our what if questions. We're trying experiments and we're playing around to see what happens with these new approaches. After we've been looking for ideas and playing around to see what we can learn, we now bring in our judge. The judge is where we introduce practicality. We determine what's possible to do. We look at the criteria that have to be met. We narrow down the choices and decide here is what we're going to do. It's our decider. But there's a final role that's key. See, it's the question about the five birds that are sitting on a wire. Three of them decide to fly away. How many are left? If you said five, you're right. Just because we decide to do something, just because three of the birds decide to fly away, doesn't mean they actually did. 
And that's the final role. The final role is the warrior. The warrior takes the decision that's been made and brings it into the world. It's about overcoming the obstacles and the resistance that any good idea is going to encounter. It's the energy that has to come with the idea to bring it to life. The takeaway of all of this for me is this. Creative thinking is a process and it's a habit. We aren't born creative just like a muscle. We have to strengthen it and our creativity grows through exercise and strain. Think about areas in your business and your life where you face hurdles to creativity and ways that you can bring in the explorer, the artist, the judge, and the warrior to solve problems in new and creative ways. Thank you for joining me for this episode of Modern Farm Business. This is our one-year anniversary of the program. And if you're a new listener, I encourage you to scroll back through our library at previous episodes. The topics we cover and the guests that we have on are really timeless, and they're valuable to your life and business no matter when you listen to them. So I encourage you to go check that out. Also, I love hearing from listeners, so if you have a favorite episode, send me a note at dean at modernfarmbusiness.com. Thanks again, and I will see you next week.